Hi, my name is Marlon De Toy from WildEye, and I would like to tell you a cool story about something we got to experience a couple of years ago in South Luangwa in Zambia. Now, I love encountering uh, unique sightings and the kind of thing that you don't see every day. And for some other reason, South Luangwa has, has given us these experiences on a fairly regular basis. It's the kind of park that's very, very wild, quite isolated, in fact, and not fairly often visited. Not a lot of people know about it, or certainly not as many as what should know about this very, very cool park. Now, let me paint the picture. We were out on game drive in the morning. I think we had been with a leopard when we got a call that there was a buffalo stuck in the mud and there was lions on the one end and hyena on the other side. Now, the leopard was pretty good, but we had to go and check out the sighting because the potential for something to happen there and to go down was just too big. Now, we, we um, had, a, had a drive over to the scene. I think we drove faster than usual to try and get there before anything went down. And we came across a spectacular scene. There was this buffalo bull, old, old buffalo, um, and it was firmly embedded in, in the one, the further end of a, of, a, of, a, of a pool, a pool of water, quite muddy. Um, the top half of him was sticking out, but he was stuck. He wasn't going to go anywhere. And then on the one side of him, of him there was, uh, I think it was three or four hyenas resting in the shade, watching him. And then on our side of the scene was a pride of lions. All right, so picture the scene. We get there, buffalo in the water lions on our side and on the other side hyena now no uh, uh future uh, seer here but i could see that there was potential about to go down here now the biggest challenge was we needed time it was early in the morning i think it was about 8 to 9 a.m and it did not look like anything was about to go down right away the lions were quite relaxed just monitoring the situation and the buffalo was still alive so i think for the lions instead of just running and digging right in there they it was a, a muddy water, it's dry season, there could be crocodiles um, in that same body of water. So they were, they were understandably quite careful. And the last thing they wanted to do is rush in there. And the hyenas felt very much the same. The hyena themselves did not want to just rush in there and um, risk a confrontation with the lions immediately and also the potential of a crocodile showing up and making a meal out of one of them. Now, what did we do? We decided to wait. Um, fortunately, I had a, a great group of guests um, who, who had been on safari quite regularly. And I told them that, in my opinion, something was going to go down here. And fortunately, most of my guests were regular safari goers and they could see exactly the same. We decided to wait. Even if it took the whole day, we were going to wait this out. And we did exactly that. Fortunately, we were staying with a great camp and our camp called Nsefu Camp on the Nsefu sector of the South Luangwa National Park. And they brought out uh, like a mid-morning snack for us. We waited. They brought out lunch for us. We waited. And it was a long day. It's hot. If you've been in South Luangwa any time of day, it doesn't matter winter, summer, it's pretty darn warm. This was in late July, I think maybe late July or early August. And the weather was pleasant, but it was still a hot day. Fortunately, there were some trees around and we took to the shade and we just waited. We we hung around and, and the buffalo itself, you could see, was visibly stressed. He wasn't at his happiest and, and it was a tough thing to witness, you know, to see this uh, in, in real life like we did. It wasn't easy to see. He, um, he was stuck. He was thrashing about from time to time. And then as the day grew on, you could just see he was getting more and more tired and was struggling more and more. What was quite obvious was that the buffalo was dehydrating he was extremely hot and also I believe that he very well knew the lions were there and the hyenas. So I think there was a state of shock and stress and it was around 2 or 3 in the afternoon, I think just before 3 p.m. that he finally um, ended up dying. It was tough to watch, guys. I think um, the lions may have chased him in there because we could see some scarring and bite wounds on the tail, the, the back end of the buffalo, which is very typical when lions have a go at buffalo. They, they approach from the rear, avoid the front horns, and I think he took shelter in the, in the muddy part of this uh, waterhole, and just unfortunately, there was no escape from it. And we waited. So time went by, and it was I think it was just after 5 p.m., that the lion stood up and started approaching the water. Now, if you had been sitting there from nine o'clock in the morning, hours go by, 
to see that moment as the lions just stood up and started marching in towards the carcass, oh boy, that was something else. That was for us like this, just um, a reward after patience paid off. We, we thought this might go down after dark, which makes the wildlife photography part of it really difficult because it's, you can use this, we have a spotlight, we can stay out after dark, but the light was just beautiful, that late afternoon light. And so what we were expecting were these lines in the water feeding away, engaging with one another, beautiful photographic opportunity. And it was exactly that. The lions entered the water from the backside um, and it gave us a perfect show of them coming in. They were, they were facing us. I, I positioned the vehicle or asked the guy to position the vehicle in such a way to give us these incredible faces and expressions and uh, hopefully some fighting between the lions and the water. But they were quite were quite hesitant of just stepping in and I'm pretty sure it was because of the crocodile factor which is something to be considered in South Luangwa dry season in these pockets of, of isolated water. Five minutes went by, hardly, and these hyenas, I think it was three hyenas that were behind the lines, appeared back onto the scene. I think they heard the water or some kind of commotion in the water, they knew the lines were up and they came running in. They did not even hesitate. They moved in there with such force. Now, I've seen hyenas displace lions of carcasses before. Big groups of hyenas. These were seven lions, three hyenas, okay? Never did I think that these hyenas would be so aggressive and so bold that they would run right in there and chase the lions off. That's exactly what happened. These lions did not know what hit them. Yahina appeared on the scene, they were vocalizing, which is a very, very loud form of intimidation. The whooping and the laughing that you typically associate with spotted hyenas, that is actually a very heavy intimidation factor for lions. Now, the lions were already on the back foot. They were in the water and they were already uncomfortable. They didn't want to be that low down in the water, in the mud, feeding on a buffalo, potential of crocodile arriving on the scene. Add to that these super aggressive very bold and confident and loud hyenas and the lions were having none of this so within seconds these hyenas appeared on and chased every single lion away from the carcass unbelievable sighting now th there was one lioness which was i think the lead lioness the oldest in the pride and the most dominant she had a collar on she stood her ground she was a little bit caught on the back end there she was uh, out of the water behind the carcass in direct line of fire for these hyenas but she stood her ground, she growled, and she gave chance for all the other lionesses to get out, to get out of the water, to move away. And she very soon afterwards did exactly the same. Now, it was spectacular. The sounds, guys, was, it was amazing. The lions came to settle right behind our vehicle. They were covered in mud. Um, you can see they were wide-eyed. They were upset because they had just been chased off what promised to be a very good meal for them. And the hyenas were right on them. They were persistent. With the calling and the vocalizing of the hyenas, more hyenas arrived on the scene. And I think within a very short space of time, there were 16 or 17 hyenas all around us gathered on force to take on these lions. And there was a spectacular moment of interaction right beyond our car when a lioness, she was growling with hyenas approaching her. The hyenas walked past, um, got, got rid of her clan, or her, the rest of her pride, and then walked up and gave her a very hard Video, time. Guys. She didn't move, she growled just to hear that growl. The whole entire car shook from the growl that she uh, that resonated from within her when these hyenas I'll tried to get close. I got video here, Grant, if you want to photograph. And the hyenas strangely just left. And that was it. The lions decided they were going to leave. They moved off. The carcass, the carcass was unoccupied and the hyenas left. And we stayed for another 20 minutes or so and just no change. So we figured we'd been there the whole day. We gave it a good go. We left evening game drive back to camp and we would come back very early at first light the next morning. And that's exactly what we did. As we arrived on the scene, we had no idea. Would the lions be back? Would the hyenas be feeding? What was going to happen the next morning? We got there and, as I thought, hyenas were there and they were busy devouring that buffalo. And what was spectacular is where we could position the car right in front of the carcass, 
hyenas facing us and it just gave us a special epic show of the hyenas engaging with one another and also feeding on this carcass in the water a unique sighting in itself now i've seen hyenas don't mind the water as much as what lions do They're, they'll often interact in the water they'll play they'll go lie in the water and it's cool down on a hot day so they they don't mind the water as much as the lions do and it made for a spectacular sighting I remember there were some of the scenes with hyenas engaging and growling at one another and having a go at each other, tackling each other back and forth, back and forth. And the photographic result was spectacular. All the guests got amazing images. I mean, we were there for three hours, I think, a long time, probably till between 9 and 10 in the morning, having arrived before 5 a.m. So we, we had this entire stretch where we could just, in very beautiful light, photograph these hyenas on the carcass engaging, fighting, interacting. You know, they don't like sharing. There's an entire buffalo on offer, yet the same two hyenas will feed on the same spot and give each other a hard time for some other, other reason. And as you've seen in these videos, it was spectacular. It's a sighting that you don't often get to see and it's something that you don't often get to experience like that in the wild. And that's why I love safaris. That's why I love going to places like this where for some other reason you get these kind of engagements on a more regular basis. And South Luangwa just is special for that kind of experience. And there's no doubt my guests could walk away from that experience just eyes opened and smiling the better for it because they got to see a part of nature. Not only did they wait for an entire day to get to uh, see this experience. I mean, that itself is a story to be told. But they got to see the lions on the carcass. They got to see three hyenas displace a pride of seven, which is magnificent in itself. They got the audio and the vocalizing afterwards. And then the next morning, early, 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 we were back at it. And they got another fantastic experience as these hyenas fed on the buffalo for the better part of the morning. And that's how our sighting and our experience ended. And it is one that I will always remember and cherish. Just for, for the, the company that we had, the sighting that we had, the, the unique experience that I got to offer my guests on that trip to South Luangwa. So I hope you enjoyed that. It is a spectacular place. It's a place that we offer in our safari arsenal. And as Wild Eye, we love visiting. We love taking our guests there. And if you have never been, come and join us there. If you have been and you want to come back, you know where to find us. Guys, thank you so much for, uh, for your time. I truly appreciate that. Again, my name is Marlon DeToy, and I look forward to telling you another story not too long from now. Goodbye.